Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is Lost Hiker Survival Kit. Stand by. Alright guys, so let's talk really quick as we walk here about some facts and statistics for survival in a national forest. Now, let's take the year 2017 for instance, approximately 3,500 people went missing in national forests during that year. Of that 3,500, over 90% were found alive within the first 24 hours. Another demographic was found within 48 to 72 hours, and then after that, the likelihood of surviving out in the wild diminishes exponentially, but there are people that have survived for weeks at a time out in the wild and have been recovered later. The majority of people that went missing that same year, 77% were domestic visitors, meaning they lived in the area and regularly visited national forests. The majority of those people that went missing and were found went missing because they wandered off trail. So the vast majority of people go missing in national forests because they get lost. So in our survival kit, not only do we have to have the ability to maintain life out there in the wild, water, food, shelter, fire, signaling, medical aid. But we should have a robust land navigation kit. So we're not out in the wild using the shadow stick method to try to land navigate and find our way out to safety. Now I get a lot of questions about personal locator beacons and a lot of comments about personal locator beacons. Those are all well and good, but here's some facts for you. In the same year, 2017, 275 uses of personal locator beacons were executed successfully resulting in search and rescue recovering individuals. Of those 275, only 74 were used on land. That's approximately 0.02% of people who were found successfully by search and rescue via personal locator beacon. The vast majority of people were found because there was a missing persons case reported. Somebody left a map in the rear with friends and family, letting them know where they're going, when they're coming back, and what to do if they don't come back on time. So we need to have a kit that functions for life support in a regular survival scenario. We should also have a lost hiker kit that enables us to land navigate. All right guys, so we've got our bag right here. Let's go ahead, we'll open this up and we'll go through the items by category. Here is our fire kit. Recommend having multiple options for fire starting. We have a waterproof container of stormproof matches. Having a waterproof container obviously protects our matches. And then the stormproof matches inside are great for starting fires. Next we have that ferro rod. Thousands of strikes with the back of our knife, the 90 degree edge can take that material off. It's thousands of sparks for the potential of fire. And knowing how to use a ferro rod with material that is available and processing that material for tinder kindling and fuel to get a fire going, a ferro rod is a waterproof option for fire starting. Next we have that Bic lighter. This is probably the number one go-to for fire lighting. Why use matches or a ferro rod? We can just bick it, right? Brightly colored Bic lighter with yellow duct tape around it makes it highly visible. And then the duct tape is multifunctional. We can use it for band-aids or improvisation or extending flame. But we have that lighter for lighting fires. Next, we just have man-made tinder in the form of wet fire. Wet fire is just a small little piece of tinder that we can crush up and use with our ferro rod or our lighter or even a match to extend flame and get marginal tinder and even wet tinder dried out a little bit for starting fire. You notice in the Lost Hiker Kit, all of our items for each 
subcategory of survival, fire, water, food, shelter, signaling, and then navigation. All of these items are going to be brightly colored. So we have an orange match case. We've got a ferro rod, but we turned it into a highly visible item by adding red lanyard to 550 cord and then yellow tape onto that. In case we drop it, we can find it. And then the big lighter orange already highly visible with yellow duct tape makes it even more visible for our purposes. We definitely want to have multiple components of our fire kit, multiple options for starting fires in inclement weather or when tinder is marginal. We definitely don't want to be out here using improvisational methods like our glasses for firecraft. I would rather rely on these items than impromptu improvisational methods. These are the components of our fire kit. All right, so for our water items, we always, again, anytime we go afield, we want to have ways to contain and then purify our water. One is none, two is one. So we want to have multiple ways to purify water, treat water, to make it safe for consumption. Here we have water tablets. We can add water tablets as a very easy method for purifying water. It's lightweight, compact, and mobile. We can put it in our kit. Highly recommend for individuals that go to the field to have water tablets to purify water. In the event we lose all our containers and we still have our water tablets on us, for whatever reason, we can use water tablets to purify water. If we find trash or empty bottles around, trash is everywhere, we can still use empty plastic bottles along with our tablets to purify water. Next we have a filter. Now this filter is just a geopress from Grail. Fill the container up with water. Put this filter in, press down on a flat surface. That geo filter, the orange portion, is going to filter our water for us. And then after it's treated, we can put the cap on and have water transportable, treat it almost immediately, and then carry this with us. As another form of purifying water and making it safe to drink. Finally, we have our canteen and canteen cup. Highly encourage anybody going to the field to have a canteen and canteen cup. This is just a 32 ounce bottle and nesting cup. Again, Old Faithful, we can fill the canteen with water, transport it, and then use the cup along with the canteen, place these into fire to boil water. Boiling water is the 100% surefire way to purify our water and make it safe for consumption. So having multiple items in our kit, especially for civilian use out on the trail or in a survival situation, these items are still lightweight, compact, and mobile enough. It makes sense to have redundant water purification items, tablets, a filter, and then a metal canteen or container. So these are the items for our water kit. Easy items for us to carry for our shelter kit are going to be orange space blanket and then 55 gallon drum liners. Here I just have orange 55 gallon drum liners and then an orange space blanket. Inside the space blanket, which I've secured with just a couple of pieces of 550 cord, we have prepared stakes for shelter craft. and then a quick deploy ridge line. Now typically in a lot of old handbooks you'll see that 550 cord or paracord that we use for survival. In winter time we're told to use black 550 cord or dark colored 550 cord and then in the summertime we use white or light colored 550 cord. But we can split the difference by using red 550 cord especially for a civilian lightweight survival kit. Items that are high vis like this orange space blanket like the orange drum liners our red stakes the red 550 cord and then even the inside of the mylar of the space blanket 
or just passive signals that we can still use for survival and search and rescue. So we are that much more visible because we want to be seen and we want to be found. For subdued colors we want to get rid of, everything is going to be highly visible and highly recognizable. We can use the orange space blanket not only as a shelter, we can use it as a blanket. We can use it as a signal by placing it at a point of visibility. Orange side out, we can even use the mylar on the underside as another signal. Uh, 55 gallon orange drum liners, not only as signals in and of itself, like creating a flag or marking the trail, we can still use these drum liners for creating browse beds with the debris around us. These two items are very lightweight, easy, compact, mobile, easy to carry that we can put in our kits that are high visibility and use for the signaling as well as for shelter craft. It makes sense to have shelter items for shelter craft that are high vis and multifunctional. So in keeping with the priorities of survival, we've gone over fire, we've gone over water, we've gone over shelter items. Now let's talk about food. I highly recommend and encourage that we all carry different emergency rations with us. Emergency rations should be food that are high calorie foods, easy to chew and easy to digest. Foods that are high in fat or higher in fat as compared to protein and carbohydrates. Some of the things we can carry are gonna be different cookies and food bars, like these fig bars. We can carry multiple granola bars. Granola bars are typically high in fat, high in energy. The reason we want high fat foods for an emergency ration pack is because fat is easier to digest when you're operating on limited water. If you're already dehydrated and not near a water source or your water intake is limited to what you have around you, such as boiling snow, high fat foods are easier for the human body to digest. Fat is easier to digest. It takes more water to digest protein and carbohydrates than it does fats. And so having food that is high in fat still gives us that nutrition without pulling too much water from our bodies so we can still maintain hydration. I think in our rations packs we should carry also is a variety of drink mixes. Now typically we should probably have some electrolyte drink mixes, hot cocoa drink mixes, again high in fat, high in calories, and then teas if we're caffeine drinkers. Tea is better than coffee. We still carry coffee in our emergency rations pack, but coffee is a diuretic. It's going to make us want to go to the bathroom. We're going to lose a lot more water, pull water away from our bodies. Tea does not exacerbate thirst and even caffeinated tea as opposed to coffee is less of a diuretic. It's still a diuretic. It will exacerbate the sensation of thirst and dehydration less than coffee will. So if you have to have caffeinated drinks, put tea in there. And then again, electrolyte drinks for the purposes of replenishing electrolytes if you do have abundant water sources. And then things like hot cocoa can go in our emergency rations pack. Another thing we can include in our rations pack is going to be bullion cubes. We can add soup cubes like this, these bullion cubes, to our rations pack as another form of supplementing calories. Even though there's not too many calories in bullion cubes, there's about five calories per cube, it's still a way to supplement calories and then get a little bit of nutrients in the form of sodium. Plus, it's something to taste. It's warm drink. Psychologically, it'll benefit, but it's another way to add food and sustenance to our kits without taking too much away from our bodies in the way of hydration. Lastly, some things I like to include in my rations pack is going to be hard candies. with our spirits a little bit, so having some candies, hard candies, especially something that's not going to melt, is going to be good for our rations pack as well. So that is our rations pack. can't argue enough that navigation is incredibly important. So when we go afield, we should have multiple forms of navigation. Our navigation kit should be robust in the event we do go off trail, and we should do our due diligence to have the cursory knowledge to know how to land navigate and then know the area we're in, leave a map with individuals back at home, let them know where we're going, when we're going to come back, and then what to do if we don't show up on time. So one of the first items we should have in our kit is going to be a compass, direction finding.
as well as helping to make improvised maps in the event we lose our map. We can still use the scales along the side to create our own map. All right, after our compass, we should have a protractor. Protractor is the square piece of plastic in front of my notebook. It has three different reference angles in it for MGRS or military grid reference system typically maps are going to have grid lines on them of varying scale This one happens to be a military style protractor with three different scales on it And then the outside edge is going to have degrees as well as mills to give us direction We can use the protractor to plot courses find our location, determine distance and direction, and then use this also as a scale for the purposes of map recreation. But having a protractor gives us a way to find our location within a meter or within 10 meters in a very accurate measurement using a topographical map. And then clearly we want to have a map, a topographical map, representation of the Earth's surface as seen from above. You can get them at most camping stores or outdoor stores, and I recommend we buy the map of our area that's going to be waterproof or semi-waterproof. A tear-resistant map is also good. This just happens to be a map of the area that I'm currently operating in. But this map is a simple map I picked up at an outdoor store that I can use to land navigate and terrain associate and use this to plot a course or find my way around different areas and move through and around wilderness. So we have compass, protractor, and a map. Those are the three things we need to successfully land navigate or orienteer. But we should also have a notebook, pen and paper of some type in our kit for land navigation. But this is also multifunctional in that we can leave messages, uh, make notes, keep a diary. We can also use this to recreate maps. I prefer, again, the type of right in the rain notebook paper that has the grids built in. We can use that grid to recreate maps. We can also use this paper and pencil to recreate our compass. If we drop our compass, we can use a solar compass. And that's another advanced method of land navigation, but it's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, and it's a way to navigate with some precision. Now, lastly, we have our GPS. Highly recommend individuals carry a GPS and know how to use the GPS. GPS can give us distance and direction to our next point. It can tell us where we are at exactly within one meter. This is a very robust land navigation kit but for civilian purposes. Everyone that goes afield should know how to land navigate, have a good kit like this, and then know how to use it, plot points, find their own location, resection, intersection, whatever it is, even advanced forms of land navigation like solar navigation. But this is going to be the items for our land navigation kit. All right, guys, let's talk about our signaling kit as part of our survival kit. Now, primary is always going to be that cell phone out in the wilderness, and oftentimes we are going to be out of range of service with our cell phone or limited service, and we may not even be able to call out. And then after a little while, the battery is going to die on our cell phone, rendering it useless. We can always carry an external battery, but we need to have contingencies in our survival kit for signaling. So phone primary, not always going to work. So let's talk about items that we can use, passive and active signals for daylight and then hours of limited visibility to signal for rescue if we have to stay put overnight out in the wilderness. That first item is going to be that bandana. Bandana brightly colored. We can use it as a marker. We can use it as a medical device. We can use it as a flag. We can use it for a strainer, gathering materials. This bandana does a lot of things for us, so adding it to not only just our signaling kit, but to our kit as a whole gives us a multifunctional tool and a very lightweight item like this bandana. Okay, so we have that bandana. Next, bright orange surveyor's tape. Now, surveyor's tape is a fire and forget weapon. We can use this, break off a hunk and tie it to a tree as a marker or to blaze our trail. But surveyor's tape is a fire and forget signaling device that we can add to our kit that is lightweight. Next we have that whistle. This is just a Fox 40 whistle, brightly colored. All of our items are brightly colored. We can use this whistle as an auditory signal for help. Oftentimes our voices are not going to carry through the wilderness or through trees and dense brush as well as a high-pitched whistle like this. 
having this as an auditory signal covers another base to our visual signals. Next we have a chem light with brightly colored 550 cord wrapped around it. This chem light is a buzz saw as we call it in the military. Take the string off and it's tied through the chem light itself and then swing it around in a circular motion creating a buzz saw effect if you will. And that buzz saw is brightly colored and noticeable, especially in hours of limited visibility. We often use these to mark our casualty collection points. You can use this as a signal during hours of limited visibility as well. Another item we can have as part of our signaling kit is that signaling mirror. You'll see I have a sheath made out of duct tape with yellow duct tape around it to make it highly visible when it's in a sheath. And then I even have a red lanyard on this mirror. But a signaling mirror is a good survival signal. Using the sun's rays, we can reflect that light over distance. Civil War soldiers and outposts, even after the Civil War, when the U.S. Army was fighting the Native Americans on the frontier, used signaling mirrors to communicate between outposts, sometimes upwards of 120, 130 miles away. So signaling mirrors can be seen a long, long distance. I know there are a lot of non-believers out there, but trust me, it is history and fact that signaling mirrors were used even before the Civil War. So having a signal mirror, aviators understand signaling mirrors, and then being able to use this signaling mirror with three flashes, followed by a break, and then three more flashes, or a continuous repetition on an aircraft or a boat or some sort of object where people are located can send that signal for rescue. So having that signaling mirror is going to be important. Lastly, we have that headlamp, and you see we have a strobe. Always get a headlamp with a strobe. This is another passive signal. You can use this at nighttime to free up our hands for nighttime tasks and out during hours of limited visibility, but then the strobe on it acts as a signal in and of itself. We can hang this above our camp or hang it above our location in a direction that we know most likely that search and rescue will come from to signal that direction. So having a headlamp is going to be an important part of our signaling kit. All right, guys, that covers our items for our signaling kit, passive items, as well as active items, color contrast movement, and then auditory signals with that whistle. We have a complete signaling kit here that is very lightweight. One of the last priorities for survival, we already covered fire, water, food, shelter, we covered land navigation, and then we've covered signaling. Now let's talk about medical. Under the medical priority of survival. I've also included repair or utility. Now for medical, highly recommend we all carry a cat tourniquet or a tourniquet of some sort and then know how to use it. Next, just a small medical tin with routine items. All right, guys, here is our mini medical tin. We've got moleskin for blisters, super glue for lacerations. We've got razor blade for cutting away clothing as well as improvisation chapstick for our lips and then fingers. You'll know a steely eye killer by the suppleness of his lips. We've got a combination first aid and burn cream for treating wounds. And then burns as well. Medications, aspirins, and then allergy medicine for operating out in the wilderness. A little bit of Kevlar cordage, some scissors. We've got bandages, just a bunch of different band-aids, sizes, shapes in our tin. And then finally a spare lighter for fire lighting, of course. And we can use the tape on the lighter as impromptu bandages as well but these are the contents of our mini medical tin. Now for utility and repair, we have a little bit more red 550 cord and then duct tape. Well, can't you do a duct tape and 550 cord? You're not a real survivalist if you can't take 550 cord or paracord and then duct tape and survive out in the wild with those things. But having these on, cordage and then duct tape, probably the number one survival tool in the world, we can use these for a variety of purposes. So these are the items for our medical kit and then utility and repair. All right, so you'll notice I haven't even talked about knives or tools yet in our Bible kit. These are some of the final items. All are high vis, just like the majority of our items. So that first item we're going to have is a fixed blade knife. This is just a Mora Clipper. Very cheap but reliable knife we can use for wood processing and cleaning game. Next we have just a Swiss Army knife or a multi-tool. Swiss Army knife, big blade, little blade, can opener. It has a saw for notch carving, scissors. You can also have a multi-tool in the way of this Leatherman wave. 
It has the pliers, screwdrivers, and even external single hand open blades for ease of use. Having some sort of fixed blade knife for woodcraft and then additional multi-tool items like the Swiss Army knife or sack and then a multi-tool like this Leatherman Wave. And these are gonna be our tool items for our survival kit. Now some final things we can consider putting in a survival kit. One of the obvious ones is gonna be spare batteries for our electronics. Lastly, something we can add for improvisation and for a variety of things is gonna be a clear plastic drum liner. This clear plastic drum liner we can still use for a browse bed, we can use it for material gathering, we can even use it as a transpiration bag for water collection. as well i hope you liked that video if you did like that video hit that like button hit that subscribe button leave me a comment in the comment section i always appreciate your feedback i want to thank you guys for everything you do for me and for the channel for your likes your views your subscriptions your comments your feedback and your shares and i'll be back with another video as soon as i can guys thanks